to edit your Kubrick theme, it's always best to work on a copy of the default theme rather than the default theme itself. So what I'll do here is I'm going to go to my FTP site and we'll take the default that's in my themes directory. The default is the Kubrick theme and I'm going to drag it out to my computer and you may do this with an FTP client or cPanel or whatever you want to use and then I'm just going to rename that directory and we'll call this wall and then while I'm here I'm going to go ahead and open it just so I'll be able to recognize it uh, get it back into WordPress and I'm going to open the style CSS edit it with any text editor and here where it says WordPress default I'm just going to call this wall as the name of the theme I'm just going to save that so then we'll FTP wall back to my site. Okay, so now I have wall in my themes directory. Uh, so we'll log into the WordPress site, go to appearance, and now we'll see the wall theme. And so I'll select wall as my default theme, or as my theme that I'm using. And then I'll do my editing on wall instead of on the default. And uh, it's good to do that. That way if you ever upgrade and you overwrite default, you're not overriding your custom theme. Okay, so we have a custom theme. Let's look at how we can do some editing. Uh, I'm going to use a PSD file. It's called EduChalk Kubrick Template. And you can download this from the website at educhalk.org in the post. And we'll open that in Photoshop. Now, when you open this in Photoshop, you'll see a complete template here for uh, Kubrick theme has the header, the background, the writing area, the footer, everything you need. Uh, if we look over to the right here in our layers, just to sort of orient you a bit, there's the background layer. If I close the eye, you see the background disappearing. There's the layer for the page in the middle. There. Uh, this is the footer. If I close it, see how the footer goes away here. The blue background of the header is here. And then the rounded area for the header, this is a uh, mask, is here. If we close that, it takes the whole thing off. So by using this, it makes it really easy now to customize your Kubrick theme. Well, let's look. Let's say that we want to put a custom picture in the header here. So I'm going to open that uh, image that we want to use, and you use whatever image you want. Your image needs to be at least 720 pixels wide and 200 pixels high. And I recommend that you pick one that's even larger than that, and it gives you some room for adjustments. So I'm going to open an image here. Now this is a really large image. Uh, the image that I have here, 3888 pixels wide by 2592 high. That's way too big. So the first thing that I want to do, and that's because, again, uh, our header is 720 pixels wide by 200 pixels high. is about the area you have to work with, and in fact it's a little less than that because the entire width is 720. Uh, and your area that your picture is going to show in is a little less than that. But it gives you a rough idea. So the first thing I'm going to do this large picture is uh, crop out some stuff that I don't want. Just crop and keep what I want to work with. And now once I get it cropped, then I'm going to go to my image size and resize it to, if it's 7, have I been saying 720, 760 is what I meant. Uh, I'm going to resize this to, uh, we'll just say, 800 pixels wide to give me some additional room. Okay. So I have my image resized to 800 pixels wide. And I'm going to come down and take that image, come up here and get my uh, Move tool, take that image and drag it up into my template. And now when you do that, it's going to create an additional layer over here, a new layer. So when you have that new layer here, you need to make sure the layer is above the blue header. So I'm just going to drag and drop above the blue header. So now I have my blue header here, my layer, and my rounded here. So that puts it underneath that mask and over the blue header. And you can see where it is here. Now I can take that picture and drag it around in here anywhere that I want. Notice since I made it 800 pixels wide, the picture is wider than the area. And that's fine. I can just move it around. It's taller. I can move it up and down position it so that I have it about the way that I want it. So that's all there is to it, to getting your image in there. So any image that you have that's larger than your header area, just drag it in, position it where you want, and that's good. Now once you get it in there, there's some things you can do with it. Uh, select my layer that has the image. One of the things you may want to do is to come up to the opacity. Instead of having it 100%, drag it down 
and when we drag it down notice the image now starts to fade out and the blue from the background starts to come in. Now if you want a color tint to your image that's good but you may not want that color tint. If you don't then just come over to your blue header background and close the eye to hide it. When you hide that then the blue no longer shows and now you're just seeing your image. So now you can see what the opacity is doing. If I have it maximum it's there when I drag it down then it's washing it out. Now that's a good effect to have particularly if you want to if you have a really dark image and you want to have writing on it. Let's say that I want to create a custom header here with my site name and some writing and things like that. If you take that opacity down then it's going to fade out that background image a bit so that your writing stands out more. So I'll take it down to 24-25% that's a good setting for me I think and leave it there. Now again if I wanted to have a, a color tint to that I could leave the blue if I wanted and if I wanted I could take the blue opacity down as well so that the blue tint isn't as blue and still have a tint or not by hiding it. If I wanted a different color then it's just a simple matter of selecting your blue header coming in and adding a new layer so that it shows again below the image but above blue you close the eye on blue and then take the layer that you have and choose a solid color so there I could have a red you know any color that you want essentially so let's just let's stick with red that's pretty stark or something close to red so then you could take the red if you wanted and drag it down so that it's not as sharp so anyway a few things that you can do there on that I don't want that I'm gonna right click on this layer and delete it just did that to show you and I don't want the blue so I'm gonna close the eye I just want this uh, now that I have it there let's go ahead and come over and click on the text tool and come up here and click in our header and it's gonna once I do that it'll create a new layer here it'll be either above or below the image it doesn't matter just so it's uh, in this area and then I'm gonna type in some text so and highlight it. I don't really like the red so I'm gonna go up and change the color of the text I'll make it black uh, and then I may want to change the size make it just a little bit larger and you can do all kinds of stuff with your text uh, I may want to that's just sort of some plain writing there let me click on the move tool uh, I may want to give it some depth and that's easy enough once you click off the text and have your move tool selected if you have your layer that your text is on selected then go down and click on the uh, little FX symbol and you'll see a drop shadow click drop shadow and you'll get a menu up that will allow you to do some additional uh, editing to this text to add some depth by putting a drop shadow on it. You can change some of the properties over here. I normally leave these by default. They're set up pretty well. Uh, but you could uh, leave just a normal drop shadow. You can put a bevel on it. Uh, you could do a contour and you can see how it's slightly changing it to give it even more depth inside the letters. And then you can do all kinds of stuff with a sort of an inner glow or an outer glow. Uh, type thing, satin, you can do color overlays, gradients, stroke, all kinds of stuff here. But typically, if I'm going to add some depth, I'll just do a drop shadow and I may do a bevel and emboss depending on whether I want that or not. Uh, but we'll just leave it there for now. Uh, position your text wherever you want it. And then I'll put one more set of text down here maybe. Technology made easy. Uh, highlight that come up and change it maybe to 30 and yeah, that looks pretty good uh, leave it calligraphy of course you could change it to any other type uh, style you want uh, maybe I'll just leave it at that for now uh, you can do all kinds of other formatting that I won't go through uh, just sec for the moment just for the sake of time put it here and we'll put a shadow on it as well and maybe instead of adding the bevel I'll, I'll just leave that with just a drop shadow so I have that now of course I could put other images I could put graphics in here maybe a logo all kinds of stuff on this uh, picture that I want but my header is looking pretty good I'm going to leave it like that for now